mode. Good afternoon, everybody. Uh, everybody can hear me all right, hopefully. Uh, got a few people signed in. Uh, give it a couple more minutes to see if we get any more. Um, if anybody's not hearing me, raise your hand. Let me know you're not. Okay, I'm going to unmute Kim for the duration of this. Uh, Kim, you there? Right. Okay, assuming everybody can hear me. Can uh, somebody just send me a question or something? Let me know they can hear me all right. Uh, Kim seems to be on the other line. I just want to make sure you're all hearing me. All right, good enough, Josh. Let's uh, get started then. I'll go slow. People are still starting to uh, roll in, and I'm getting plenty of questions. Cool. All right, sounds good. Let me uh, let me get this show started then. All right, today I want to talk about follow me charge stage coordination and basically what to expect out of multiple charge controllers, uh, be it midnight charge controllers or anybody's for that matter really. My name is Ryan, technical support manager here at Midnight Solar. You guys can get a hold of me at ryan at midnightsolar.com or at the office number extension 151. Uh, you can also get me at customer service at midnightsolar.com. Multiple charge controllers without follow me, multiple charge controllers with follow me, and follow me. So that's what we want to talk about today. I broke it up into three categories. I want to hit on what you should expect out of multiple charge controllers without follow me or coordination, and what to expect with follow me coordination, and then I want to explain what follow me is. Maybe a little backwards, but I, I just chose to set it up that way. So first of all, without follow me, you have each controller needs its own battery temperature sensor. Um, equalize needs to be started individually on each controller and float chargers are not coordinated. Uh, you also need displays for each controller. So basically what happens here, your controllers all wake up in the morning, they start charging a battery bank and one of them sees the voltage a little higher than the others, so it goes to absorb first. Its timer counts down. It goes to float. And then all the rest of the controllers are still stuck in bulk. And in the perfect storm, if you will, uh, one of those controllers can end, actually end up spending the whole rest of the day in bulk, keeping the batteries just elevated above float, but yet not ever getting to the absorb to run the timer out. So that's one of the benefits to you know coordinating them versus not coordinated that having them not coordinated. Uh, the other one, like I say about the equalize, um, say you've got four charge controllers. Without coordination, you actually need to start an equalization charge on each controller independently uh, with the coordination that will be you know different. Uh, like I talked about the float charges being coordinated, uh, battery temperature sensors. With coordination, you only need one. Without, they each need their own. Um, and the biggie probably is on the classics is each one needs its own display if you want to be able to program it or see it. 
And with the classic light and the classic, it's a, it's almost a marriage made in heaven there for multiple units because you, you can save some dough on the uh, second or third or fourth classic and only get one display if that's all you need. So with Follow Me, like I said earlier, uh, one battery temperature sensor is all that's needed. Um, we actually have, you know, a couple ways, a couple things we do here. One is the follow me, and the other one is the battery temperature sensor sharing. So you can actually disable that if you, for some reason, wanted multiple temperature sensors. Um, equalize, manual or audio, auto, will be controlled by a single controller. You will still need to set up the equalize voltage in time, but you know, if you want to start an equalization charge, you simply go to any one of the classics. Or if you've got a classic light, you just push and hold the equalize button. Or if you want to do auto EQ, you set it up in the one single MNGP and they'll all follow. And like I said, the float charge is coordinated. They'll all go to float at the same time as each other. Um, the uh, single display, that's that again being the biggie. Uh, when you set up the follow me, you can use one MNGP or midnight graphics panel for you know conceivably up to 254 classics if you wanted to. Um, that is the number. There's a 255 addresses and one of them is reserved for something else. So basically what you can do is you can set up each classic to be its own address so you simply scroll up and down through the available classics on your network and we'll talk about that more in the uh, the follow me stage but I really just wanted to point out that without follow me you know the time old problem of multiple controllers one going to float one staying in bulk the rest of the morning and just basically boiling the batteries if you will uh, with follow me that problem has gone away so here I've got a wiring diagram showing follow me something unique we decided to do with follow me uh, for a couple reasons one to keep it very simple and one to keep it very robust was we decided not to do any hubs, any routers, any of that stuff. So what we do is we have a big circle, if you will. And you'll notice that on the first charge controller, the bottom jack goes all the way over to the middle jack on the last controller. And then it goes down through the string, one to two, two to three, three to four, up to, again, up to about 244 in theory. Um, We've tried about 30, and we know that works just fine, and there's no reason at all that it shouldn't work up to 254. We just haven't strung that many together. Um, this is standard four-conductor phone cable is all that's needed. Uh, we do have six-conductor, three-foot networking cables, but you can literally go to Walmart or Radio Shack or your favorite hardware store and get four-conductor phone cable, and that will work just fine. Um, as you can see, this is an instructional sheet off on our website. We do show you how to make the cable if you want to make your own out of Cat5 cable or whatever that case may be. But it is just standard phone cable is all that's needed. So programming, follow me. Um, I'll go into this. this. This probably won't be a real long webinar, but I'm hoping we have lots of questions at the end. So to program the classic, what you need to do is you need to go to the main menu, as seen here, push in the bottom right button, and then you need to scroll over until you find tweaks and push the enter button. We'll keep pushing the more button or the top right soft key for more, for more two, more three, and more four. We want to get to the last more menu, and here's where we program follow me. Uh, follow me has two things that we want to work on. One is the actual follow me. This is off by default, and when you start to scroll up, that will jump to five. This is a number, uh, basically what we recommend is this number be at least two times the number of classics on your network. And what this is doing is this is the number of revolutions around the block, if you will, before another change is allowed to be made. So say for some reason, classic number six out of ten classics didn't get the message to go to float for some reason. It, it was, you know, confused at the time, uh, whatever the case may be. Um, what would normally happen without worrying about that is the next trip around it would ask and it would go back to bulk. So what we've done is we've given you a little bit of a cushion, if you will, to allow for a, a time to ignore any other changes. And like I say, that definitely wants to be set for about two times the number of classics you have on your network. 
Um, the next number is BTS net. I shouldn't say number. The next menu is BTS net. And what that's doing is networking the battery temperature sensor. So if you want to share the battery temperature sensor values across all of the classics, you need to turn that on on any one of the classics you want to read this, the value with. So if you had one for some reason that you did not want to read the battery temperature sensor with, you could leave that one as off and it would simply ignore that. Um, that's pretty much all there is there. And at this point, you would end up just pushing the status button to go back to the home screen. And you would have follow me enabled. I do want to point out a couple other things. Uh, ground fault sharing. Uh, with follow me, we do share ground fault warnings. So you would only enable one ground fault jumper on the classics. Uh, for those of you that are familiar, for those of you that aren't, the classic has ground fault protection built in. And there's a hardware jumper internally that disables or enables the hardware portion of ground fault. So you would want to put that jumper on on a single classic only and then make sure that the ground fault is still enabled in software. It does come enabled by default in the software. So if you've got four classics and you want all four to watch the ground fault, you leave it that way and put one jumper on. Say one of the classics is on a wind turbine or a hydro turbine or something that you do not want to turn off on fault, you would simply go into the software portion and turn off ground fault. And that can be found back in the tweaks menu. Um, I can actually go back there and show you that. Uh, oh, one screen too many. Hold on. There we go. The uh, second tweaks menu, you'll see right here, arc fault, ground fault. Ground fault comes on by default. So you'd simply scroll over to that on, turn it off, and push enter to save that data on any classics you wanted to ignore that ground fault signal if you were going to use ground fault on the network. Naming the classics, this is another unique feature. Um, as you probably are aware, if you've played with the classics yet, each one says classic on the screen, top, middle. Um, that can get kind of confusing if you've got 10 classics on your network and you're trying to scroll up and down through them and they all have the same name. So one of the neat features we've given you is on the uh, local application software, you can go in and apply a name to your classic. Uh, for instance, I named mine like Office, solar high voltage, solar low voltage, and windy, um, and lister for my lister generator. That, that makes it easier when you're scrolling through them to see which one you're looking at. And we'll talk about addressing a little bit later. Uh, we will probably most likely be adding the naming function to the classic itself as well. So if you do not use the local app, you can still give your classic a name. It obviously is much easier on the local app because you can just delete the field and type it in on your keyboard, whereas if we do it on the classic, you're going to have to scroll through the alphabet and pick your letters. So, But we will most likely be adding that feature in the future, and uh, it's something I, I want to point out at the same time is, you know, if any of you have any ideas or anything with any of this hardware, or any of our hardware for that matter, definitely email us, you know, Ryan at Midnight Solar, customer service at Midnight Solar. We welcome everybody's suggestions and thoughts. That's uh, how we derive our product to be the best we can for you guys out there in the field. So again, just naming the classics, it makes it easier to navigate. Addressing each classic for viewing on a single MNGP. This is where it gets a little interesting. Um, if you have four classics on your network and you want to be able to see all four classics on a single MNGP, and this is probably more likely if you're using you know, lights and classics like the picture up above shows, we have three lights and a standard classic. So what we would do in this case is we would actually take the MNGP from the standard classic, we would plug it into each light one at a time, and we would hold the left arrow and we would use the up or down arrow to change the address of that classic. And then we would hold the left and right arrow simultaneously to save that information. So to back up and explain that a little bit differently, the classics by default are at address 10. So as I mentioned earlier, there's 255 addresses in Modbus. So the classic is address 10 by default, so it leaves off all those blanks for other use. So you could address the first light as 11, the second one is 12, and so on and so forth. And you need to do each light independently, and then you go back and plug the MNGP in, and then 
to view those lights, all you need to do is hold the left arrow and tap the right, I mean the up key or the down key to scroll through from, you know, 9, 10, 11, 12, or whatever the case may be. Um, that makes it easier. The reason we have you hold the left arrow is we found that people were bumping the arrows by accident and switching the address and it was confusing them. So we wanted to put just a little bit of safety in there so you knew you were changing the address of the display. Um, the other thing I will point out is, and I think it comes up later, but you do need to use the MNGP to activate Follow Me on the lights. At this time, Follow Me is not able to be activated over the local application software. Now, I also want to point out that uh, classic lights from about 5400 and down serial number wise, the MNLP or midnight LED panel will not work with Follow Me. Um, if you do have a classic light and you do want to use it in the Follow Me network, please email me, customer service at Midnight Solar, Ryan at Midnight Solar. I will get you a new MNLP. Uh, basically, there was a code change to allow for Follow Me, and the old ones do not work with that. All right, before I go on, I do have a question. Will you be able to use a shunt to send all the controllers into float rather than just a timer? or the output current of the controller, since there's usually some current going through the inverters. Uh, what, what they're asking here is about end amps, for instance. Um, typically, end amps is a nice way to know when to go to float, because that shows the battery is actually full. The problem with the charge controller is it has no idea how many amps are going into the battery and how many are going into the inverter. What we are doing, we do have a board that we're building called the Midnight Current Sense Module. It's a small little board that screws onto the shunt and it interfaces with the auxiliary two input on the classic and allows the classic to monitor current flow on the shunt. And that will be set up such that one classic that had the control of that could use that for end amps. So now instead of watching the current leaving the classic, you could actually watch the current going into the battery and say, okay, at 10 amps I want to go to float. 10 amps into the battery I want to go to float and that current sense module will watch that and the classic will trip to float at that time and all the rest in the network will follow. So uh, hopefully that answers the question on that. Let me clear that out and then we will move on to the next slide. So programming the classic light for follow me, I kind of touched on that but I'll touch on it again. You take the MNGP from the standard classic, you physically plug it into each light one at a time, and you go through the steps we showed earlier in the tweaks menu to turn follow me on and BTS network on if wanted. I do want to point out also there is a LED1 mode, and that's in the miscellaneous menu. When you have the classic in LED1 mode, you get a blue LED that blinks at the inside the classic up in the top in the middle. Everybody's probably seen the blinky LEDs. But in LED1 mode, that blue LED will blink. It's a real quick blip every time the comm goes across the board and everything is asking the right questions. And if there's a crash in the network, you'll notice it will stay on for about a half a second. So that's a good uh, troubleshooting, if you will. If you, if you stack four classics up, things don't seem to be behaving right, and you're not sure if your cables are right or what might be wrong, you can turn the LED1 mode on and see which classic is getting the long LED and that will tell you it's not getting any information from its neighbor to its left. So that will allow you to then pinpoint which cable might be the problem or what the problem might be. Uh, also, like I mentioned earlier, you, oh, before we go there, when you go to put the MNLP back on, or the light panel, if you will, the LED panel, you do need to make sure you set it to custom so that it doesn't try to write all the settings, because presumably, if you've plugged the MNGP into it, you've gone ahead and programmed all your settings as well at the same time just to make life easy. You can go ahead and turn all that stuff on and uh, you know get it all set up the way you want and then move on to the next light and so on and so forth. We are working on adding Follow Me to the local application as well as My Midnight so that you will not need to move these across the board. You could simply fire your computer up and go to each one individually and set it up that way as well, trying to give you as many options as possible. And again, there's a serial number. If you have, an M if you have a classic light with 54, 35, or older, and you want to use it and follow me, you will need to leave the MNLP unplugged and or contact us for a replacement MNLP. So some highlights of follow me. 
The absorb time and absorb voltages must be set on all controllers. Basically what happens is whoever gets there first just tells everybody, let's go, it's time to go to float or whatever the case may be. Float voltage again must be set on all the controllers. Uh, EQ time and voltage and auto EQ parameters. Well, auto EQ parameters actually is different. So EQ time and voltage must be set on all controllers. But if you do want to use auto EQ, you only program that on one. And uh, I think I got a question here. Hold on a minute. Oh, I guess I. Oh, I've got a chat. Let me expand that. Um, Kim is asking how many classics can be tied together and follow me. Uh, again, like I say, in, in theory, with Modbus, it's 244. There's 255 addresses, and address 255 is reserved. Uh, address 255, just for reference, points to the classic that the, the display is plugged into. So no matter what, you can always go to 255 and make a direct connection to that classic. So no matter how hosed you get the programming, you know, if you, you're monkeying around and you set it for 125 or 130 or you can't remember what number you set it to, you can always scroll, you know, down or up until you get to 255 and then, you know, you connect directly to it. Um, so going back on again, the EQ time and voltage must be set on all controllers independently. Auto EQ would only be on one controller only. LED1 mode, again, like I told you, gives you the visual indication of functionality. Uh, follow me. Uh, some of the stuff we're working on that will, that will come now that we have the Follow Me network working. Uh, wind sync, where you can stack multiple controllers onto one turbine and one power curve, and they all follow each other, so they all share that turbine. Uh, typically, what we do now on larger turbines is we actually have one controller go zero to, say, 5,000 watts. The second controller comes in at 5,000 watts and goes up to, you know, 10, and so on and so forth. So the follow me wind sync mode will actually allow them to share it evenly. So if you're only making 1,000 watts, each one will be doing 500. Uh, with that will also shortly come solar sync, which will be uh, an interesting function because it will allow you to run one big fat set of cables in. You'll basically have a combiner box, one big fat set of cables, a decombiner box, you go through a set of blocking diodes into each classic, and then you'll put it in solar sync, and they'll all basically one of them will track the array, and the rest of them will follow its lead. Um, something else we have coming out um, shortly in the follow me will also be cloned settings. So if you have multiple controllers and they're all on the same battery bank, which they would be a follow me, you can clone the settings if you want, or you can ignore the you know. So basically, you'll be able to set one controller to clone and it will just get all of the absorbed set points and float voltage and EQ voltage and time and all that good stuff from the one that you programmed it in and you know you can that will be a, a function that can be turned off or on. So that pretty much brings me to the end of follow me I'm sure or at least I hope there's lots of questions so what I would encourage you to do is uh, raise your hand if you want I can unmute you so you can ask it physically or type it in and I will answer it that way however you want to do it but uh, please uh, ask all the questions you got while I'm doing that I'm gonna unmute Kim uh, I'm sure Kim would like to wish everybody a Merry Christmas uh, and everything and thank you all for coming uh, Kim you're unmuted I, I'm here. <laughs> can you hear me? I can hear you just fine. I'm a little okay, surprised. Good. Voice is kind of back today. It was voice was pretty gone yesterday, but she's doing a little bit better today. Yeah, we want to wish everybody a great big Merry Christmas, and hopefully everybody got our Christmas card that we sent out to everybody. And 2013 uh, is going to be a great fun year for us. Uh, we're going to be really doing a push, and you're going to be hearing from us on pre-wired systems. We're going to be the only company in the country pre-wiring everybody's inverters, so it's going to be big, and you guys need to use pre-wireds. Boy, it's just going to make your life easier to get those things pre-wired right out of the factory. It's going to help you in tech support, so that's going to be our big push coming right into the first of the new year, and first of the new year, I'm going to try to get those e-panels for the uh, um, uh, radians up, because I know everybody's hollering for those as well. 
And Ryan, how long is it going to be until we can um, basically put one PV array into one set of wires coming into um, the the classics to be one multiple big controller? Classics. Yeah, I, I'm not 100% sure. We're going to do wind sync first, and then we will be doing solar sync after that. My theory is, um, and Bobby, Bobby tends to agree with me, that it should be really easy to do in software. So we're hoping that, you know, maybe by definitely first quarter of next year. But I, I, I would anticipate maybe even something to play with January, early February. So um, we'll, we'll keep our eyes open on that. I do have a couple questions here. Um, Josh is asking, are the instructions for follow me in the manual? Um, unfortunately, Josh, they are not right at the moment, but Kim has guaranteed me she'll answer my phone next week for me so I can finish the classic manual. They are on the web page under the firmware tab, so if you were going to update your firmware, the instructions are there with the firmware. Um, and Eric is asking, how will you program pre-wired panels? Uh, it's really going to depend, Eric. If it's a multiple classic install, say you order uh, a pair of Outbacks with four class uh, four classics on it, and you ask for them to be networked, they'll probably be networked anyways. But if you ask for them to be networked, we'll go ahead and set follow me up for you in the classics. But it's usually done on a case by case basis, depending on what you want to do. Um, are you going to have an e-panel that is significantly larger than the Outback Load Center to give some decent room for wiring? Um, when you say the Outback Load Center, I assume you're meaning for the Radian. And if you, d yes, okay. We are, we do have an e-panel for the Radian. Um, Kim has been beating on the engineers as hard as she possibly can to get that bad boy up on the uh, price list. But it is more convenient for wiring. It's the original design for the Radian. And Robin pulled it back out of mothballs. It's uh, it's kind of neat. It's set up so that if you have multiple radians, you can put a dual bypass in one and do the other stuff in the second one. Um, yes, Josh, we do have we do have e panels ready for two radians. We're also working on a battery combiner. So if you've got a pair of radians or a pair of uh, you know, say you've got four Sunny Islands or whatever the case may be, we are working on a thousand amp battery combiner that will go under these so you can run one big set of cables from your battery bank. Uh, so I keep your eyes open after the holidays uh, for the web pages for the Radian e-panels, but we have four different e-panels. We have a single, I think it's four, we have a single unit e-panel. Three, okay. And then we have the the dual bypass e-panel and then we have the bare e-panel for the one that would have you know just the battery breakers and stuff in it. Um, of course, it's got going to be pretty standardized around our other e-panels, simple to use, bus bars, land your wire on the bus bars, uh, accommodates I believe up to 12 panel mount breakers and like five DIN rail breakers. We'll hold, I believe we're going to have side plates made to hold two classics on one side, so conceivably you could put you know up to four classics right on brackets on a pair of radians. Yeah, and if I can interject here, um, the one thing that we won't be doing that we've had the request for is a bracket for the Mate 3. We're not going to have that on our e-panel. Um, if for some reason we do not have this all done and all the literature and everything done to get the e-panels on the web, by the first of the year we should have the pieces and parts to still build them. So by all means, you can call us um, if you buy through distributorship. We could, per se, sell these out the back door to you direct just to get them into your hands for a one-time deal. We've done that for a few of our other um, customers. They just couldn't wait to get a hold of them because they really disliked the Outback um, way of handling this. So if you absolutely need one, just give us a call. We can uh, put one together for you. just need to call out the SPDs you want to get on it. And um, if you want us to put the... Um, we don't. We're not pre-wired them right now with the classics on them, but I suppose we could. Just a little bit more money and labor and such. Yeah, and it, it will depend on uh, you know, like again, on each each one. Each one of our pre-wired is is semi-custom. You know, we we're very adaptable in that case. And I've um, got another question here on the pre-wired panels again. Will you set up inverters and charge controls for grid type battery backup and for a certain battery type and size, for example? Uh, typically, we do not program the actual charging parameters because we don't want to be liable for your battery. Um, you know, you can supply us, say I'm using this battery and these parameters, but then something happens and you change your battery and we don't know that. We can, 
by all means program the classics from normal stuff and program the uh, inverters to sell stuff like that but the actual the actual set points and stuff we tend to shy away from just from a liability reason uh, also being asked do we have any initial pictures or drawings of the radiant e-panels uh, yes we do we've actually sold a handful of them as Kim alluded to we've gave a few away sold a few um, there are some pictures kicking around you could probably email customer service at midnightsolar.com and we can get you a picture of one open and closed and I don't know if we have a picture of a duel yet um, we may um, I know our phot photographer was taking pictures of the e-panel as we speak uh, yesterday and today they were building stuff for him to take pictures of so we can definitely hook you up with that send us an email and we'll send you out pictures uh, any other questions any questions don't have to be related to follow me either uh, any any questions in general um, anything and I'll interject here as well I just got off the phone with a customer that's trying to uh, they wanted a Magnum 4448 on the e-panel, but they didn't want it on the e-panel because we're only dealing with about six inches of height. He needs a little bit more than that. And I told him, you know, we could take the uh, Magnum off, throw it on the side. We measured everything up. So uh, we absolutely can custom do just about anything you need us to do. We can take the Magnum off, throw it next to the e-panel, um, providing you have enough room, we can make her work. Um, and we have the pieces and parts, we have back plates, so we're very open here for whatever situation you're dealing with out there. Um, we'll try to put something together for you. Yeah, absolutely. If you need a, a dual XWAC coupled system, give us a shout, you know, SMA pre-wired, uh, you know, any of that stuff, we're, we're working with all of that. The, uh, the XW is going to promise to be a very elegant AC coupled inverter. Um, it does frequency dithering. We have moved into a second building. We have two buildings now, and we're going to be setting up a very good portion of that building just for pre-wired systems. We are actively seeking a uh, an electrician to employ to help us with these pre-wireds uh, to give John some help. John does an excellent job at these, but he's getting a little backed up. He needs some help, so we thought it would be uh, it would behoove us to try to find an actual electrician to help him out. And, you know, that would just help with some more of the uh, code issues and stuff. Somebody that's a little more familiar with the actual electricity. Um, other than that, I, I don't have a lot more. I do want to wish everybody a, uh, a very Merry Christmas and Happy New Year if I don't talk to them before then. And I welcome questions. I welcome emails, phone calls. Uh, you know, definitely any, any questions, concerns, give Kim or I a shout and we'll take care of it. And, uh, yeah, Josh is saying Merry Christmas. Thank you for helping me out with this. Not a problem, Josh. Anytime. We, uh, you know, we can do this. We can do these anytime anybody wants. So, if anybody's got any idea of training and they think it's needed, give us a shout. We'll schedule it up, and uh, it doesn't matter if only one person shows up. We uh, we're here to try to help everybody. Absolutely, I want to also wish everybody a uh, happy new year, and and we're just all going to have a great time here in 2013, and we're very approachable here at midnight. That's one thing that we will never, ever lose. No matter how big we get, we'll make sure we've got people on the phones that actually understand, um, you know, any issue you might have. If I can't answer the question, i got the gurus behind me. I can Skype them. Sometimes Ryan gets, or Ryan gets really busy on the phones. If I've got a question I can't answer direct, I can Skype him. And he, quite frankly, can, you know, he could be talking to somebody on the phone and answer my question at the same time. So we try to always be available on the phone. Sometimes we're not, but we try to always uh, pick up these phones. So, again, Merry Christmas, and thank you, Ryan, for doing this for us. Well, thank you, Kim, and uh, thank you, everybody, for coming on out today, and uh, especially before the holidays. Definitely uh, have a safe holiday, and we look forward to talking to you all soon. And until next time, it's been Ryan of Midnight Solar.